How would I sum up an SK? Transcendent. Welcome to the making of Tararua SK, where we're going to uh, take you behind the scenes uh, of our award-winning adventure documentary. I'm Andy. I'm the filmmaker, cameraman, narrator, distributor, uh, and orange boy. And I'm Hans, filmmaker, cameraman, film coach, and editor. Together, we'll break down the highs, the lows, and all the wild moments that went into creating Tararua SK. And so then you, so you completed that in 2019, and then I suppose that takes us into the, starting to come to the filmmaking part of the story. Yeah. I have to ask, did you do it again? And that, apart from what we'll talk about soon. No. Yeah, to, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take that one off. <laughs> you didn't go back the next week, obviously. No. no. <laughs> yeah, but at some point you wanted to make a film. About the Tararua SK. So how did you, where did you get the idea or what inspired you to to make what was made? Okay. So it probably, go, it probably goes back 10 years and I went to my first mountain film festival and I watched this selection of incredible short films of people out adventuring and it was they were beautiful they were inspiring and kind of created this little dream that man one day I'd love to make a film like that inspired people to go on adventures and you know so that was at the time where I was early days playing with my GoPro and making my little videos from my adventures. And yeah, then over the years of making those, I started to become a little kind of frustrated that I would make these little collections of clips, put some music to it, and they weren't like they weren't very inspiring. They were beautiful. There was a whole element missing. Yeah, so I, I started I started to look at and see what courses I could do to to get better at making little uh, videos of my adventures. And it was the first courses that I did was recommended by you when when we first met, which was when we got introduced by Dave and That's right. yes. yeah. and you were looking for yeah, we got introduced through my business, mm. which is providing business coaching and technology services to to help businesses. Mm. And yeah, Dave introduced us, and we did some work together, and and we talked about filmmaking. Yeah, which was great. And you recommended I do that muse storytelling mm. yes. course. Yes, and so that was fantastic. That kind yeah. of taught me some basics about storytelling yeah and i then signed up to go and do the adventure film school that's run by the new zealand mountain film festival and and that was doing those two courses really gave me a whole pile of help to go okay this is the path to making making something more interesting than what i was making yeah and yeah. And after doing the, so while doing the Adventure Film School, the question comes up, what would you like to make a film about? And the thing, one of the things that kind of kept getting drilled into us at the Adventure Film School is just that story is everything. And you have to find the the heart and spirit or the emotion inside of that story mm. to to have something which is going to inspire people and is going to connect with people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems you knew there was a story to tell. <laughs> and that seemed to be why you were capturing footage 
along the way, even if it was more on a, for just a one-off video way. But you got through all your adventures, you in the getting involved in the SK community. It sounds like you, you really understood the heart and soul of it and the emotion of it. But it was a, more of a case of, okay, I've got all this footage. How do I tell a story? And so then, so getting to the festival and being inspired from that and then learning about storytelling must have been like a piece of the puzzle coming together or... Yeah. Yeah. To, just talk us through that. After doing... After going to the Adventure Film School, I was thinking about what's a what's a what's an, a really interesting, inspiring story that that I could tell, and the SK came up as, as an idea, and I, to me the SK was something that was really inspiring and really engaging for me it had all of these layers of depth inside of the story it had all of this incredible history it had this beautiful ad adventure element there was this whole community spirit around it there were there was the sk book there were all of these trip reports there were the awards nights there was yeah, so there was all of the stuff around it. I was, I think, for me, I was like, am I qualified to tell the SK story? There was like that, yeah, you know, imposter syndrome. Sure, like, who, yeah. who am I to yeah. to tell that? And but yeah, I decided that I would try, and I reached out to a couple of key people in the community. So Tim Sutton, who's a really important person in the SK community, and I reached out to Chris Martin, who is also a really important leader in that community, and said, I've got this idea. Would you support me with the idea? And they both eventually they both said yes, they would, and that they would they'd be happy to be involved. And yeah, so I just and then I started went seeking some filmmaker ex expertise. Cause I yeah, I wanted to make something I wanted to make something great. And I knew that I couldn't do that by myself. So that's when I reached out to you and about whether you you had some recommendations of some people you could talk to to collaborate with to to make something yeah so what was your at that point what was your did you have a a vision for the film at that point a, 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 any kind of picture in your head about how it might look or was it something that kind of just grew developed as you went along so through the muse storytelling course that i'd done mm. there were some there was a some really good frameworks and some worksheets through that, that I had, that was one of the first things I did, even before reaching out to the community. Created, I created like the why around why I wanted to make this film. And mm. that was about inspiring people to go on adventures. Mm. So, so I created that, a, I created a, and a kind of a rough outline of some of the what I thought were the key kind of story points, and yeah, so I had an uh, so I, so I definitely had some ideas, and yeah, there were a lot of missing bits to how it was all going to work, mm. and mm. the whole kind of storytelling piece evolved. And was one of the biggest struggles mm. over the course of the project. Yeah, because at that point you didn't intend on putting yourself in the in the film. No, it was you were going to be telling the story from other people's points of view. And that's how I understood it when we, you first started to tell me about the idea, mm. which instantly fell in love with the idea of making this film, the concept that you had, because it just seems like such an inspiring story to put out to people and you've got that great landscape and all the dynamic dy dynamics 
It comes in with the Tarara range. So mm. it just had all the elements of a great film. But you, at that point, it wasn't gonna, you weren't going to be in it as a character or, or even narrator, I don't think. No. Yeah, yeah. No. So your vision was to somehow, I think, using the interviews, was that right? To tell the story through other people's yeah. recollections? Yeah. Yeah, mm. so I had... So I knew that I, I knew that I wanted to have a number of different interviews and I, I was putting the word out, trying to find different people who were interested in being involved. Tim and Chris were the first two that I asked for their involvement. And then I went then I went looking for others. And the yeah, so I, I was planning to build the story from those interviews and from some of the and from some of the other historic footage of some of the other characters like Colin Ralph and Chris Swallow. And really loosely speaking, it was grabbing the stories from those characters and then putting that to a, a visual story of doing the SK. So that was my loose uh, concept. Yeah. But that didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, and, and, but it was a great starting point. That was a, that was a la- launching point. But I do remember in one of those meetings where you, you were telling me about the film, you wanted me to have a look at the footage you'd had. You'd collected over the last decade, mm. which I was more than happy to do because I, I love looking through footage and seeing just finding what cool stuff might be lingering in there and so I went through most of your footage all the GoPro footage and yeah it was just like I think I was probably into my third card or third bit of footage because you had had a lot I was probably I think it must have been three or four hours worth of footage or something like that Mm. it was obvious to me that you've you've got enough footage here to tell a story it's just a matter of who can we get on camera now to to back up the footage and and make the story work. But yeah, I felt like the, the that footage was was going to be great. Mm. <laughs> it's just so much variety in it. And and it was yeah, very real. Mm. It wasn't filmed with a any it wasn't filmed with a making it a, 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 the final documentary in mind really. Mm. I guess it was just here I am doing this and this is what it's like. Mm. <laughs> so it was very gritty. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. your reaction to it was yeah I was super excited because for a number of months I had been because I originally when I talked to you you thought that I should chat with Mike and I chatted with Mike a little bit and I, I was really I, I was I really wanted for whoever I was going to work with to see that footage mm. because I I thought there was a lot of kind of gold in there mm. and so. It, it took a number of months until we got to the point where I wasn't going to work with Mike. And I think we what happened was, is we, I, when you first told me you wanted to make this film, yeah. and I straight away thought, okay, we've got to get a camera operator in there and we've got a cinematographer or whatever. We've got to get there and get some real proper documentary footage here. It's not yeah. all going to be GoPro footage. Sure, we'll use the GoPro footage, absolutely. But no, we're making documentary. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to get a, you guys got to get a cinematographer on board who's a bit of an adventurer too and can go in with a small kit, a smallish kind of camera kit, but actually get something that's... My my initial thought was, yeah, you need something that's going to to lift up the GoPro footage and that's going to bring it up to a, a more of a documentary standard. So how can we find someone who's willing to go in with you guys on your adventure? Because I guess what we haven't mentioned quite yet is that is that I might have this <laughs> around the wrong way, but you and Joe and Tim planned the adventure to go and capture f- the footage. And I think, but initially that adventure was going to be involved with that camera operator. Mm. And they were going to come in at, at different points or maybe that they were going to do the bit of the beginning then maybe they were going to come in halfway somewhere and there were discussions about, or maybe even in the end as well, discussions about how that camera operator could could meet up with you guys just so we'd have a, more of that kind of, a different kind of eye, a different sort of perspective to the story. So it wasn't all just that wide angle GoPro footage. That was something that I pushed, I think, for, mm. but I didn't want to do myself. Yeah. <laughs> I think not long before you told me about the idea to make Tararua SK, I'd been on a overnight adventure with my son up to the name of the huts just escaped me. 
it might be two to five hut. Yeah, two yeah. to five, yeah. Yeah. And it was a slog in and out. And we didn't go up into the tops. It was along the valley floor, but it was just slogging through the mud for six hours each day. And I was pretty burnt by the end of that. And I thought, there's no way I can give Andy the kind of level of product production value that I think it, this needs and do the, the you know, uh, walk in the ranges. I'm just not that. I'm not one of those kind of adventure type people. But So I cut myself out of that early on. I suggested some people that you could try and work with. And and around the same time, we were having discussions about, oh, we could set up a, a, a sort of an interview in one of the huts with people mm. and tell some old stories, which I thought was quite, we thought was quite a good idea, didn't we? Mm. But I was thinking about this, thinking, oh, maybe it would have been harder to pull off than we thought with pe- <laughs> people coming to huts quite late in the day, they're tired, there's other noise and things going on. I don't know, it might have worked, but it's interesting to think about. But yeah, so you... So Mike became unavailable, and then so I suggested someone else you could work with f- for doing that, and they had a conflict to time thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we had it all booked in. Mm. So we'd booked this window to go and do a film trip. So mm. when Tim was available for, I think it was about f- five or six days. Was there was a window where he was available, and the the cinematographer was available for, I think, four of those days. And then, so we're hoping that both of those would line up. But unfortunately, they didn't line up. And the cinematographer photographer had another job, which was actually filming the New Zealand surf champs, which conflicted with that period of time that Tim was available that we got the weather window for. Yeah, so that meant that we had no cinematographer and one of the key kind of elements that the cinematographer was bringing was a drone so we could get some aerial photography which you know we thought would be really important so as this kind of unfolded I went and bought a drone and got a permit and learned how to fly the drone because the last time I'd owned a drone I managed to lose it on its first flight in the Tararua range. <laughs> Got blown off a ridge, never to be seen oh, again. No. <laughs> so, I how many drones are up there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for the film trip, I invited a number of people from the community to be involved in that. And a few people showed some interest, and and Tim was it was awesome. Tim was able to be there and. And Joe was was really excited about getting there. So it ended up being the three of us. And we took on that trip, we each had a GoPro. So we had three GoPros. We had the drone. And we and I also had have a like a compact kind of travel video camera. And so we had those five cameras for our film trip. And so what did you do to prepare for that? that had filming becoming three camp becoming three cinematographers as well as completing the sk pretty lucky to have joe and tim there tim is an amazing photographer has an incredible eye has done quite a bit of gopro work as well so you know He's awesome, right? And Joe has had 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 his GoPro for a little while and had done a little bit of work, but again, very good eye. And so I created a shot list. And as we were driving up to the road end, I adjusted all the settings on all three GoPros so they're all the, so they're all the same because they're all different. And we discussed the the shot list and and we just chatted about a couple of different ideas about different angles and just some basic kind of shooting guidelines. Yeah, so that was we had this really quite cool conversation as we were driving to the road end in preparation for our film trip. Yeah. That was awesome. I think we're all good to go. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you, Tim, and Joe were 
filming with the GoPros on the, on the... You were doing a two day or a three day or... Yeah, so we did a weekend. You did a weekend SK? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. we... Yeah, we started on Friday afternoon and, yeah, went into the... Went into Dundas, which is... Yeah, I think it was... Might have been five or so hours for us to get into there. Yeah, so we got there just before dark into Dundas. Yeah, and you got those. Is that when you got those nice shots of the the, the drone shot coming, getting the sunset? So that yeah. we shot that. So that was the morning. Ah, and that was one of the shots that I was hoping to get was the sunrise at Dundas because Dundas is a, just a spectacular location. And you've the hut faces out east. You've got that rising sun, mm, mm. and we had this weather forecast that looked really good. And as we started on Friday afternoon, it was it was great. But once we got actually onto the range proper, there was clag, and it was a bit it was a bit kind of murky. So we got to Dundas, and I was really hoping that it would clear for the morning, so we could get some of those shots of the sunrise from mm. Dundas and it, and it did and it was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and it was yeah, it was an amazing it was an amazing trip at Dundas. We arrived and the the hut was already a, I think there was one couple who were bunked up on one bunk, so there was one bunk spare. Joe and Tim got to yeah, they they top and tailed on a bunk and I found a I found a little one someone else had a little squab mattress that I could set up on the floor, and we had a couple of other people come in after us. It was a full right. It was a full <laughs> hut. Yeah, and and one of the people that arrived th- that night was Megan Setti, mm. who was doing a weekend SK as well. Mm. And Megan is the was the editor of the SK book. Yeah, it's just like. <laughs> Yeah. Classic. It's great. You know, so great. Yeah. And we we're chatting with Megan and and had a wonderful few days together along yeah. along the route. So yeah, yeah. And yeah, and so yeah, I wanted to just talk about the yeah, just the the obviously taking GoPros into the ranges was the way to go because you guys could do your walk without losing any ground. And still capture a range of different types of shots, ranging from a real low angle to the ground, to stationary shots, to uh, moving shots, to just vistas and details. You know, bringing the cameras up close to details as you were going, and mm. which you've done a lot in the um, archival footage too. You, mm. There was a lot of like nice detail shots, and um, the GoPro's got a wee microphone on it, so it captures the the natural environment. It, often it gets a bit, a bit of wind noise going in it, which just adds for me, added to the authenticity of the environment yeah. uh, rather than, but yeah, you did a, yeah, you did an amazing job in using a lot of that sound in the, in, in the final edit and bringing those special effects or the sound effects through, which really added a whole nother dimension to to the film, which mm. yeah was really cool. It was a real treat to be able to, to have all that there to use. Yeah, one of the ones that sticks out is the sound of people's feet going through the icy grass, the, the icy tussock. Yeah, that had to go on the film. Yeah, <laughs> and I had no idea where it would fit. Things like that had to go in, the, in there because it just gives you a sense of the environment, yeah. and and the fact that people do it at different times of year. Like it's mm. not just a summer adventure. It's it does get it taken on all year round. It seems yeah, yeah but. Yeah, so you guys and, and Tim did vlogs. Yeah, little, which I think were, were, he did. I don't, did he tell you he was doing those? We talked about yeah. We talked about doing right. those. One of the part of the conversation we had in the car was mm. going like, if you've got things you want to say, it's great, great to share those. Mm. They can be really. That can be really great footage and really great sound bites mm. for the film. We did talk about that and and you know, t- amazing at that. He's a really, yeah, really powerful communicator. And yeah, it was amazing because you you uncovered some some wonderful 
some wonderful snips of that. Quite late in the edit, I I found a couple. I'd included a couple of my rough, my first rough edit, but yeah, there were some great ones that you uncovered. That actually, I remember we actually replaced some of the interview sound bites with with there was at least one of vlogs that was a far better a far better clip than what we got in the interview it's, a, it's just amazing what he he did it yeah. was a total surprise i did i don't think either either of us were expecting that you'd had the discussion about doing that yeah doing it but he'd really gone all out and, yeah and 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 taken the time as he was walking to tell these little stories and share memories and and, mm. and also giving a sense of his feelings in the moment of doing the walk as well mm. and yeah when i stumbled across it because stumbling across it because there was just a lot of footage plus i guess we'll get to talk about it too we were up a bit of a deadline at one point too <laughs> so it was like oh my god and i think it was just a coming across it's him him part of his vlog and just oh what, what, what have we got here oh my god the first bit i listened to was oh let's use that mm. oh okay there's just so much here we could have pulled from to you so that was a real find yeah it was great that but all in all what you guys did around getting into the filming with the gopros and the rangers and your drone work that that was a humongous that's what the film needed be sure to check out tararoa sk at tararoa sk.com also screening on apple tv Prime Video and in New Zealand. Thanks for joining us. What's your next adventure? Boom. Done.